Okay, looking at the lesson six practice problems. Number one, a car is traveling down a highway at a constant speed, meaning its speed is not changing, um, described by the equation d equals 65t. d represents distance in miles that the car has traveled uh, at this speed in t number of hours, so t hours. All right, so uh, what does 65 tell us? 65 tells us the speed, okay? That's the speed. It's, it's going 65 miles, right? Every one hour, which is how, you know, if you're ever talking about cars and you're talking about how fast you're going, everybody gives it in miles per hour, unless you're from Europe and you just use kilometers per hour. But in America, we're backwards and we use the opposite, all right? We do, well, not, I wouldn't call it the opposite, but just we don't use the metric system. We should, but we don't. Um, how many miles does the car travel in 1.5 hours? Well, I'm just going to use that equation. So D equals 65T. T equals 65T. So all we have to do is 1.5 hours is the time. So we're going to do 65 times 1.5. 65 times 1.5. And then when you do that, what do you get? You get like a million or something. You get 97.5. So there it is. So that's it. So that's 97.5, 97 and a half miles. very easy when they give you the equation. All you have to do is kind of plug stuff in and then solve for it. Um, how long does it take for the car to travel 26 miles at this speed? All right, now we're going to, this is going to look more like an equation you see in algebra. So you've got 65t, I'm going to write it like this though, 65t equals 26 because we're given the distance here. We're given the distance. So how long does it take the car to travel 26 miles? So we're going to divide by 65. So we're going to do 26 divided by 65. And you get, when I do this, I get t equals 0.4. So 0.4 hours. 0.4. So 4 tenths of an hour. Um, which is not 4 minutes. I mean, it's not 40 minutes either. Uh, if you want to turn that into minutes, just multiply that by, just multiply that by by how many minutes are in an hour, 60. So 0.4 times 60 is 24. So that's 24 minutes right there. Now I think it doesn't necessarily say, so I think both answers are fine. Both answers are great. But just, um, you know, just I think it's important that you know how to do both. You should. All right, so we're done with that one. All right, next problem, number two. It says, Elena has some bottles of water that hold 17 fluid ounces. A, write an equation that relates the number of bottles of water, B, to the total volume of water, W, in fluid ounces. All right, so uh, this is very much like the last one. So this, this time we're not given an equation. Though. We're, we're told to figure it out. We've got to figure out this equation. So... Um, what are we going to do? So we got 17 fluid ounces, uh, and so for this one, we're going to set it up in such a way that uh, W equals 17B, 17B, all right? So the volume of water is going to be equal to 17 times how many bottles there are, okay? So that's going to be it, and then for B, we're just going to plug that in. So instead of writing 17 times B, we're going to do 17 times 51. So 17 times 51 is 867. So that's the volume of the water. 867 fluid ounces. Okay.
you can see which way this is going. Uh, for C, it says how many bottles does it take to hold 51 fluid ounces of water? So this time we're going to do, we're going to set it up the equation 17B equals 51. 17B equals 51, because we want, we're looking for B this time. We're looking for how many bottles it is. And this problem we're going to divide by 17. Divide both sides. What you do to one side of the equation, you do to the other. Those cancel off, they turn into 1. Or in other words, 1B. Pardon me. And you get B equals, and 51 divided by 17 is, my marker's not working, is 3. So three bottles. Three bottles. Yep. One bottle is 17 fluid ounces. Two bottles is 34. Three bottles is <clears throat> 51. All right, for number three, it says there are about 1.61 kilometers in one mile. Let x represent a distance measured in kilometers and y represent the same distance measured in miles. Write two equations that relate the distance measured in kilometers and the same distance measured in miles. So the the most helpful part of this part of this problem is it says there's 1.61 kilometers in a mile. 1.61 kilometers. So what we're going to do, uh, does it say what letters to use? Oh yeah, it says use x and y. So we're going to do, um, we're going to do 1.61 times x. All right, x, x is <clears throat> going to equal what? What's that going to equal? X is going to represent um, the distance, right? And we're going to make that equal to y. So there's 1.61 kilometers in a mile. All right, and so if we want to know um, what two miles is, what two miles is, uh, you know, we just do 1.61 times two, and they'll tell you how many kilometers there are. You know, if we want to know what's in five, you just, five miles, just do 1.61 times five. All right, so that's one equation right there. That's one equation. And then the other equation wants us to get x by itself. Get x by itself. So I'm going to divide y. This time, you're going to divide y by 1.61. So you're going to make it x equals y divided by 1.61. Okay? So y is the number of kilometers, whatever it is. And if you divide that by how many kilometers are in a mile, you're going to get the number of miles. Okay, number four, in the Canadian coin, 16 quarters is equal to the value of two toonies. All right, and um, so right there, that kind of tells us, you're always looking for the information where both the X and the Y are given. And that right there, we have it. And our, it's always, if you want to look for the constant proportionality, it's always Y divided by X. So two divided by 16. And if you do that in your calculator, you can get a decimal uh, I think it's easier if you just leave it as one eighth, like reduce it like a fraction. So there's your constant of proportionality. All right, let's finish the table. So we're going to do one times one eighth. One times one eighth is, you guessed it, one eighth. All right, 16 times one eighth is two. That's already done. We're going to do 20 times one eighth, which is going to be 20 eighths, which is. 10 fourths, which is 5 halves, which is 2 and a half. Okay? So we can do this 2.5. That makes more sense to you. All right, and then we're going to do 24 times 1 eighth, which is 24 eighths, which is 3. All right, so we finished that table. So, all right, check. All right. For B, what does the value next to 1 mean in this situation? Well, you know what that means. That, you know, if you find the 1, if you find the 1, you found the constant of proportionality. You know, whatever the 1 is for x, whatever the 1 is for x, there you will find 
your kinds of proportionality, which makes it really easy to figure out what the kinds of proportionality is. Not that you probably didn't already know it, but it's it's one eighth. the constant of proportionality, okay? It also means that um, <clears throat> one eighth of a toonie equals one quarter. One eighth toonie represents one quarter. Now, each table represents a proportional relationship, so that's out of the way. Fill in the missing parts. All right? Draw a circle around the constant of proportionality. Now, I just got done saying, just kind of saying the constant of proportionality is wherever the x equals 1, wherever the x equals 1. So I haven't even solved anything yet, but I guarantee you the constant of proportionality will be there on that table. It will be there on that table and there on that. Okay, so that's all we got to do. Now let's figure this out. Let's, um, this one's pretty easy. This one we're just going to do um, 10 divided by 2. 10 divided by 2 is 5. So there's your constant of proportionality. So that means we're multiplying by 5. See, 2 times 5 is 10. So what times 5 is 15? Well, it's got to be a 3. All right, 7 times 5 is 35. 1 times 5 is 5. So there you go. All right, on this one right here, we're going to do, I know it's, this is A and B, but really it's X and Y. And so you're going to do 3 divided by 12, which is 1 fourth. So multiplying by 1 fourth is like dividing by 4, right? Multiplying by 1 fourth is the same thing as dividing by 4. And so just let's do it that way. So 20 divided by 4 is 5. Right there. All right. And then what divided by 4 equals 10? Well, uh, 24 divided by 4 is 6. 28 divided by 4 is, is 7. You know, 32 and so on and so forth. It's 40, right? So 40 divided by 4 is 10. And then 1 is going to be 1 fourth. There you go. So, so far, we've had, we've got two of our constants of proportionality. And then this one right here, um, this one you're going to do 3 divided by 5. Now, 3 divided by 5 is 0.6. You can do that. Uh, I think leaving it as 3 fifths is pretty good. So, I'm just going to put that there. Why not? Let's just do it. Get that out of the way. And so now we're going to do 10 times 3 fifths. 10 times 3 fifths is going to be 15 fifths, which equals 3. That's not right. I do wrong. Oh, I see what I did wrong. Start over. So now what we're going to do is we're going to do 10 times 3 fifths, which equals 30 fifths, and 30 divided by 5 is 6. All right, and then right here we're looking for, okay, what, what number times 3 fifths equals 18? Well, I can just do 18 divided by 3 fifths. All right, 18 divided by 3 fifths is going to be, um, keep change flip, So you get 90 thirds. And 90 over 3 really equals 30. There's that. Okay, number six. Describe some things you would notice in two polygons that you would that would help you decide um, that they were not scaled copies. So describe two things in two polygons that will help you decide they're not scaled copies. Well, I mean, 
two obvious ones would be uh, totally different shapes. <laughs> you know, if they're completely different shapes, because it doesn't say the polygons are the same shape, it just says they're polygons. So different shapes would um, would automatically exclude them from being scaled copies. Uh, also, if they had if they had uh, different angles. Right, you got you got a shape with all right angles, and then all of a sudden you have a, a shape with you know some obtuse angles or acute angles. Then yeah, you can say that's definitely not um, scale copy. And then you know if those aren't so obvious, um, you can just look at the the ratios. You know, do they have um, do they have equal proportions? So if they have equal proportions, or here we're looking for things that make it that you know make it not included as scale copies. So they're unequal proportions. You know, you've got let's say this like this is a three, and this is a five, and this is a seven. This is not the scale, obviously. And then if I make this. Um, into one, and I make this into four, and this one into six. You could tell those that doesn't work. Three divided by three is one, right? Three. If I look at corresponding sides, three divided by three is one. Five divided by three is not four. Seven divided by three is not six. So those, you know, those having different ratios and different proportions automatically excludes it.